Hello? Hello? Um, hello? Am I in the right place? What is this place? I haven't been here in a while. What's going on? What's up, everybody? How we doing? I hope you're doing swell. It is Thursday. We are nigh on the weekend. They're reprinting Black Lotus and we're all still here and alive. Woo! Yeah, I got a little, tried to get a little fresh cut silver. I wanted to be ready. I'm coming back, bro. We've been off. I had a baby. My wife did with me. Always sounds weird when I say I had a baby because I had the easiest job in the room. That was six weeks ago. Now we are here back time to get to the end of 2022. We got two and a half months left in this year. Isn't that insane? Insane to me, insane to me that we only got two and a half months left in this year. Everybody's good. I'm good. Mom's good. Baby's good. We're rolling right along. Rolling merrily. My wife is a superhero. She is so fucking ridiculously good at this. It is wild to me. John Reed, I appreciate that super chat. I am back. <laughs> Jake's been off the last week. He'll be back next week. We will be back at it. Officially. Wednesday streams. Videos. All of the good stuff. Andrew, I gotta agree with you, man. The year goes so fast. Dominary United seriously just came out and it feels like that's already like super rear view. Done with that one. Moving on. Warhammer time. Almost done with that. I haven't even gotten my decks yet. Moving on. We're done with that. Didn't even get to enjoy it. I'm going to get to make like three or four videos at the end of the year that are like commanders I didn't get to try this year. <laughs> and I'm just going to go on a fireball spree of building a bunch of decks and playtesting a bunch of stuff simply so that... I can experience some of the cool commanders that happened before the year is over. It's ridiculous. Kevin, what's up? Good to see you. Hope work is going well. Sit back and relax. What we're doing tonight, y'all, we're going to look at some deck lists. If you're not familiar, we have a commander league as part of our Patreon. Join the Patreon at any level. It makes you eligible for the commander league. Why would you want to do that? Because there are prizes. And I got to tell you, it's the, it's, it's just such a killer community of deck builders and players supportive, want to help you succeed, wants everybody to kind of do their thing. And it's still competitive. Look, we're not a bunch of pushovers. You can ask anybody I've played with in the months that I play. If I can get somebody out of the game, you're dead. You're murdered. You're murdered. Have to do it. But still very supportive fantastic group of people over here what we're gonna do is look at some of the winners this is something that's been requested a couple of times it's something i've said i wanted to do and planned to do and i figured why not tonight i didn't get to stream last night look it's the baseball playoffs y'all i've got two my two hobbies my two hobby loves mtg atlanta braves baseball i'm not going to go on a baseball tirade right now but there was a playoff game last night and so didn't stream on the normal night. And look, that's just how October's gonna be. We're gonna figure it out together. We're gonna all hold hands. I'll watch baseball, y'all don't have to. And I'll be on the days where there's no playoff game. It's just how it's gonna go. That's just how it's gonna go. Jake's here, everybody say what's up to Jake. Jake is towards the tail end of a, of a short week off. It's not quite a full week, not over a week. Got a little short week off, did a little mini tour around the nation vacay 
Got some family in. Got some Vegas in there at the end. Saw that. That was pretty sick. Didn't know that was happening. I'm starting to get pictures of Jake. Like day before yesterday, Jake's sending me pictures and I'm like, oh, what's he what's he doing? Fucking Nobu Sushi, baby. I was like, what the hell yes. I want to go there. So that's cool. Jake forgot to do his taxes. That's a weird thing to say in October, but it is true. When you get an extension, halfway through October is the time. Anyway, Commander League, what we're going to do is we got some friends, okay? Some friends that are joining us. First off, my co-host for the evening, I'll introduce him in a second, is going to be Bobby Z. If you're not familiar, Bobby Z is a mod on the channel friend of the channel and the commissioner of our commander league the commander league is his baby honestly if he was like i want this to be bobby z's commander league i'm outie he maybe could do that don't do that bobby please 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 don't do that that's gonna be my co-host for the evening we're both gonna go over one of our own decks as well i tied for first in one of the month he got second in one of the months so we're gonna look at those decks towards the end first up we've got j-rock joining us j-rock has this galia deck yo this galia kindler of hope deck first place in september first place in september this galia deck performed and we're gonna go through it next up we got specter jumping in specters placed third place in september so I want to look at the differences between the first place deck, the third place deck. See if there's a huge disparity. See if there's not. Magic's kind of random. You got to be a good pilot. You got to have a good deck. Over the course of a month, placing high enough in four different games to really place in that top three, not an easy thing to do. One week you get mana screwed. That's it. You're in the middle of the pack. It's tough. It's fun though. Prayers of Angel, shout out to you and thank you for the congratulations on the baby, for sure. Gary K. What? Last from the past. Not too far past. Good to see you, pal. Let's jump in here and talk to the commish. Give me just a second here, Bobby Z. We're going to get you set up. Move this over here. We got Discord up. We got Bobby up. Give me just a second. My favorite three words in Jake and Joel are magic streaming. Let's swap over. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from cold, cold New York. What's the what's the weather like up there, pal? Cold and very rainy New York. It's Bobby Z, the commish. Everybody slash wave at Bobby Z. Bobby, how are you doing tonight? I thought your face was that art. I thought I didn't think you had a face. Honestly. What is it? What is it? It's not cathartic reunion. It's the other one. Oh, your profile picture and you can't name this card off the top of the dome. Faithless looting. I'm putting you on the spot. Not fair. Oh, we're saying that we can't hear him. Let me make sure that all of my things are. Bobby, give us another sound check there. Check, check. I believe we heard it that time. Thank you, chat. Thank you for not letting us get too far into that 10 minute conversation <laughs> with only me talking. We definitely, Jake and I before, have filmed entire videos. Like, literally an entire video. Oh, man. <laughs> There's this big project. It's it. Uh, we'll see if it sees the light of day. I don't know if it's going to any. But we shot like four hours of footage for this one video. And we broke it into hour chunks so that our file sizes weren't ridiculous. And I seriously, I think we shot like a 45-minute chunk and jake was like holy shit i didn't hit record on my audio and i was like that is hilarious dude oh next chunk God. and he was like no 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 or maybe it was me i can't even remember anymore but 
Glad everybody can hear Bobby Z. Bobby, we've had this feature requested where we go over some of the league decks. Before we jump into some specifics, we're going to start with J Rock's Galia that won the September first place league. What have you noticed? Give any observations about the Commander League as a whole. You've you've seen a lot of Commander over the last ten months, probably twelve yeah. months if we include the tester months. Lots of different builds, lots of different questions. Any broad, broad observations that you've been able to make? There's a lot of people out there playing a lot of secret tech, like cards that are like 10 cents, 20 cents, that just wreck Commander that I you don't see normally get played um, when you're not playing on a budget, so. Is there any uh, one that stands out to you from this year as like a unique <clears throat> piece of tech and you were like, holy shit, that oh, card didn't so look good or what? <laughs> The biggest piece of tech is fog. Like one green mana is <laughs> yeah, dude. fog. Like out of nowhere, fog will just completely warp a game. It is so ridiculous. If you're not familiar with fog chat, it's a one inst one green instant. And it, this is a, an effect that's represented on a bunch of different cards, but one green instant is sort of the daddy of all of them. And it says prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn. And it, yeah, dude. A blowout. It's just a blowout. <laughs> Ink shield is a version of it where it creates a bunch of tokens instead or something and i have been there have been turned there have been games where i've been blown out by effects like this for sure yeah that card that card and other fog effects just put in so much work and budget um i mean there's a, a couple of cards that we found that are like in the four to five dollar mark like a chroma's will mm -hmm. a chroma a chroma's will just does so much work that card is so ridiculous yeah, so Chad, if you're not familiar how we normally do the league, there's different months. Obviously, we have a different kind of themes that we rotate through throughout the year. But it's it's typically budget. Starts around $100, gets up to like $250 by the end. So you'll raise it by $50, the budget for your deck every week. And that's sort of how we keep people brewing, keep it competitive, keep it fun. Because we're also proxy-friendly league, right? Like if you want to go use your entire budget on some single reserve list card rock and roll yeah, go for we it. don't care print it out yeah. and roll baby but typically yeah we'll keep it around these like one to four dollar cards to really make out the budget on that deck well that's cool that's cool there have been a lot of i have seen a lot of people in the discord talking about this card recently specifically in the budget realm yeah um... what changed we did one month where in we doubled all the budgets right what changed that month do you think did it feel different uh it, it definitely got more into like a, a regular commander game with uh people just tutoring for their their combos and then comboing off because that um, month was were infinite combos legal yeah so most months we have an infinite like penalty yeah and the reason behind that is so that the league can be more of an on-ramp to newer players um, and for guys who, you know, we, we have all these crazy ass decks and we play them all the time and we know them in and out, but it's fun to brew. Um, so this is, you know, mo mostly for like newer players and players who like to brew decks, um, and then just sit around with three other dudes and play an hour and a half, two hour game of commander, just to have an excuse to play cards and, and have some beers, you know? absolutely well and honestly some of the some of my favorite months have been the ones where we're just assigned a commander at random because yeah, it makes me play something i normally wouldn't build mm -hmm. you know even there was a month where i got assigned two partner commanders from commander legends that were just horrible together uh the brineland the giant sea kraken whatever and the cat that is a one four that makes your tokens tougher and it was just like such a horrible like, gonna do with horrifying yeah. pairing of cards <laughs> and but i built the whole deck around it i didn't end up playing yeah. that one because jake dropped out of that month at the last second and so i took his i took yeah, his jake assignment had like a, jake had like a god roll on the wheel oh, too well i he got tevish in a chroma and it's funny because yeah. spoiler alert that's the deck that i tied for first that month <laughs> was building tevish and a chroma and yeah, i was like everybody else was playing like the turtle guy or oh, like oh yeah exactly <laughs> and i just got yeah. a great color pairing with 
we, I mean, with a planeswalker, and we'll and we'll get to all that. We'll get to all that. But yeah, that was that was a fun month. Have you started building yet? Your Morophon deck. Are you playing next month? Uh, so Morophon is this month actually. So oh, we just that's played, happening. Yeah, we just played the first uh, week of it last week. How'd we that go? Pods. I mean, it was it was fun. There's some people playing some some pretty interesting things. Um, I've seen Slivers so far. Um, I've seen humans so far. Um, I put together elves, so I just nice. for week one you're on a one hundred dollar budget, so um I stuck with Golgari elves. Next week it'll be one fifty, so um I'll be playing Abzan elves instead and sprinkling in some white for renew removal and board wipe and stacks. Oh, and that's a cool like that. approach, like taking yeah. it from mono color to multicolor over the course of the month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, since it's Morphon, um, as long as you're just have Morphon as your commander, you can do whatever you pretty want. Much, you're, yeah, I'll ding, do whatever you want. You could play Dragons week one and then turn around and play Goblins week two if you wanted to. When we first started talking about the idea for a Morphon month where everybody had the same commander and it was just tribal month, I it was right after I had played some MTGO commander one night and someone just absolutely kicked all of our asses with a Morophon humans deck. And <laughs> it got to a point where they had a board such that they could play a creature for free because of the mana reduction. When that creature entered, they got to draw a card. They could play a creature for free. When it entered, they got to draw a card. And they just played out their entire deck basically because they just built it. I'm literally going to draw a human, you know, 60% of the time. And they give them all haste and swung and, and just wiped everybody. And this was just after they got more fun out. You don't even think that they're like developed yet. It drops yeah, and then suddenly you're playing a deck of only humans with only colored mana symbols in their costs and yeah. free stuff all over the place. Yeah, that's just, that's silly. What's next month? Uh, next month is Universes Beyond. So you have to use a commander from Universes Beyond. Oh, 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 I didn't so, even know that. I might jump back in next month. Yeah, so uh, you can do Stranger Things. You could do Walking Dead. You can do um, any of the 40K, and then you could do any of the um, Street Fighter commanders. Have you played any of the 40K decks yet? I have not. I still have them uh, packaged. I haven't gotten them out yet. Yeah, um, they ha ours haven't be arrived. Brody, Brody came through like a boss and sourced two full sets mm. for 200 each for me and jake nice. and he's shipping them to us right now <clears throat> so i'm waiting on mine dude i'm so excited i'm definitely gonna we get like to... a random stream <laughs> next week where everybody's on the warhammer decks you know wait we need to play them stock too though yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. that's what i want to do I, I, you I know i'm a pre-con fiend dude yeah. look i got a pre-con <laughs> here behind me i got <laughs> oh, which one was this? Oh, this was the cat from Capenna. Yeah, I totally want to like just sleeve up all four and get like one to go. three game, one to three games in with each before I take them apart against other the other three Warhammer decks. You know yeah, what dude. I mean? This is Kit Kanto. Yeah. They had this crazy sale on Amazon yesterday, and I was like, mm. "It's twenty bucks. Okay, I'll take it." It looked twenty like bucks. A, it's like a yeah, cool I, Naya deck I want to play, and it's got some unique cards in it. Let's roll. Any of the precons that came out, like from Kaldheim on, like not the Zendikar Rising ones. Yeah, I, uh, I would, I would say, like if I see those online for like twenty bucks, like it's a snap buy because like those are there's so much value in those. Dude, things. I got the Struffin one for fifteen bucks. I was like, this is yeah. this is down to fifteen dollars. I've still got. A Markov vampire tribal deck from forever ago. I'll just buy this for 15 bucks as a way of mm -hmm. hugely upgrading my Markov deck out of nowhere yeah, without really mean, having to search for cards. It's just going to deliver me a bunch of awesome vampire shit. And there's a, uh, I think there's like that one card in there. Like, uh, I think there's like a patron of the vein in there. Yes. And I, yeah. And then there's a, uh, the, I can't think of the, the name of the card, but the one that lets you, uh, tap your swamps for two black, I believe. Yeah. 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 Um, they're kind of revenant. Yeah. Like that was right. like a, a $40 card. <laughs> you can get it for 20 bucks Love with it. plus 99 other cards, like all day. Yeah. Yeah, so Universe is Beyond next month. That's going to be a really cool one. 
if uh if you're a patron and you haven't jumped into the commander league yet you absolutely should super fun proxy friendly win some prizes it's a great time we got some custom it's uh sponsored by dragon shield we got some custom dragon shield sleeves goes out to first second and third as well pretty good time what i want to do now let's get j-rock in here j-rock is waiting patiently jay are you there yeah what's up yo i'm hoping everybody can hear you as well ladies and gentlemen you are hearing the voice of mr j-rock our winner of september with galia kindler of hope you know going into this deck i gotta say this is probably like the least hyped of all of these decks that came out and so i'm loving seeing that it won a month let me swap over real fast Voltron does well in budget so j-rock walk us through why you picked galia what you wanted to do with the deck chat what you're looking at here is the 500 version of it it would have been a 250 version but j-rock's going to tell us about that as well so yeah uh this is my galia deck basically she overperforms at my like my local match play group uh just was winning more games than i expected to with her yeah um her ability to look at the top card of the library and just just have that information is pretty good but then to be able to cast it rearrange i got a bunch of like ponder effects in the deck um it's people look at that and they go oh that's not that great like she's gonna be okay and then it's just the auto equipping with it it, it ends up overperforming and just coming out strong um i noticed when i first looked yeah. at the list 10 creatures yeah 10 creatures in the whole wide deck you ever want more creatures than that or are you good on those no I'm, I'm that's beautiful i have a defense of the heart so that's like you know yeah yeah uh, two to two creatures the two best for the scenario you need you grab a nizan if you need that indestructible because he tutors himself like for a hammer nizan yeah chat so defense of the heart this is beautiful. surprisingly a little known enchantment to a lot of players four mana enchantment says during your upkeep if one of your one of your opponents controls three or more creatures period that's all it checks for is if an opponent controls three or more creatures real easy hoop to jump through you sack it and you search your library for up to two creature cards and put them right into play what and people sleep on that card too you'll play it and people are like oh, oh whatever and they'll just keep playing their deck doing their thing because that's what you want to do your thing when you play commander right you want to play your right combo pieces out and if it's creatures you're gonna you're gonna trigger my defense of the heart and then i'm gonna go get my two best creatures and then it's game over yeah you're good to go i did see <sighs> when i was looking through here as well cards like psychic impetus tell me about this one so actually you want to look at assault suit Assault that's, suit. that's like my favorite card in the deck yeah psychic impetus and oh well, yeah um, assault suit is good i know it's good i'm just what wondering you, what's the other one like a psychic impetus is the, the dagger it's one of these uh it's one of these protection enchantments it's one of these they can go both ways enchantments you know because mm -hmm. it goads the creature and it can also be in a pinch plus two plus two for your thing and a scry right and that's the scrying is really good with glia as well yeah exactly because you can adjust what's um, on the top mm -hmm. and then yeah so there's that and there's the there's a dagger that does the same thing that goads but so the, the the tactic with that is um to get a salt suit out which i was able to uh, probably all but one game for the month get salt suit out cooped to galia and then people it's a it's a politics piece because I, I can at that point pass Glee around and be like, oh yeah, you can look at the top card of your library too and cast equipment. Right. And I, I had a couple games against Bobby and he loved it. Like I, I yeah. remember giving it to him and he was like, oh, oh I can use Galea's ability to equip Wyleth because he was playing Wyleth that one. This <laughs> last month. That's so funny. Well, I also yeah. love you running these, uh, just the classics here. Colossus Hammer, Black Blade, bloodthirsty blade i've had a lot of fun playing bloodthirsty blade, bloodthirsty blade in different uh different decks i was playing this really in decks just i mean it's one mana goad repeatable one mana goad just seems so strong and if i'm set up i can cast that from top of my library put it on my own galia with the assault suit pass her around goaded and then <laughs> everyone else is winning the game for me mm -hmm. and that's i had a week where i don't think players uh realized like I, I got everyone else to do six damage to each other for me. Yeah. And then I threw a black blade reforged onto Galia and did the the other like 16 or 15 to knock 21. It was just like 
It's beautiful. Does Commander's Plate perform for you in a three-color deck? Because that would normally be something I would say don't do. Um, it, No, it doesn't perform as well as I want it to. Gotcha. But it looks it's a, so it's a good, one man. drop off the top. Right. It's a one drop off the top. Exactly. And it's easy, like, another equipment out, you know, some protection from that red and black removal. That's nice. Right. Um, I don't know about Commander's Plate, man, because, like, whenever I'm playing, like, my my wyla deck it's always like card 101 or card 103 it just doesn't man that's how it's been for me in mono color decks in two color decks it's card Mm -hmm. 101 for me a lot of times yeah and yeah yeah, definitely got cut for the budget because it's not worth it's definitely not worth the 17 yeah in budget commander it's not a 17 dollar player I completely agree uh, with you on that. I did like cards just like straight up otherworldly gaze because you want to be <clears> affecting the top. And this one mana yeah. common, it can flash back, which I think is mm-hmm. what puts it over the top here. Obviously, Brainstorm, always going to be good. But uh, I liked that card when I was looking through here. I got Helmer Depths, too. I pulled all those out. Yeah. Uh, Sensor's Divining Top is disgusting in this deck. Yeah, when he got top uh, out. Scroll Rack. Like- when he well, got top out in that game I played him, it was it put in so much that's work. It. Yeah, I mean it's a top of it's like what's that planeswalker that has to do with top of deck? I don't she know. She was a creature in double I mean she was a character in Double Masters 2 as well. Anyway, um when you get the top out in a deck that cares about what the top of your library is, that's pretty much that's victory right there, right? Mm-hmm. Did you win with Colossus Hammer at all? I don't actually did not know. Oh my god! I have first past. place it's has such, been stripped from you. You're not first place anymore. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you're taking Colossus it away. Hammer, um, this hammer definitely overperformed for me that month. I and did. I had Wyleth? a Bloodford Battle Axe week. Yeah. Oh where yeah. I got Double Strike and Bloodforge Battle Axe out at the same time. Oh, you got this one going. I made like six or twelve of them. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah i had i think it was the I, it might have been the week that i played dino where i had the hammer out on wyleth on turn four and swung with him <laughs> like it was crazy that's mm-hmm. brutal yeah, and then Chat, that's we're I, talking about yeah, I, I, rapid I rapid hybridization you yeah to basically stop you from winning that week because you you would have won yeah it was it was crazy Why wyleth just popped off Chat, if you got any questions for J-Rock or any suggestions, let me see them in chat right now. I want to ask you about some individual cards here, starting with the reality chip. I've never played this card, but from when it was spoiled at the beginning of the year, you know, it's it's a very interesting looking card. And it's something that I've always kind of wanted to play with. Did it get to hit the battlefield this month? And and what do you think of how this performs? Uh, yeah, I think it did. I think I had a couple of games where it worked, at least one game. Um, more for playing the lands. Yeah, I was going like to say, this it one. really par- partners with Galia well to also clear the lands off. Mm-hmm. And I've seen, I've, I watch a lot of YouTube stuff, and I've seen where, like, the reality chip commander deck, where you pair it with, um, it's the census of running top, and then a reduction. Uh-huh. So you can put the top back on top. Uh, play the senses of my top for free. Oh yeah, and draw yeah, your yeah. entire deck. Right. Um, I've seen I've seen that, and I'm like, oh wow, reality chips busted. Um, it just works with that combo. But um, yeah, in this deck, it just works with to be able to play the lands, and then it gives you if you, I don't have Galia out, and if, like she's been dealt with too many times, mm-hmm. I can make yeah like any of these my pseudo commander, and then reality ship lets me do the Galia thing still. Because it's like it's like that whole you still want to be able to do what your deck does with your backup commanders. Right, yeah. Redundancy. Right, exactly. Yep, redundancy. You know, you know Jake is all in on this deck because it's got SRAM in it. <laughs> yeah. And you got some uh you got the you got some of the staples, greatest hits mm-hmm. of a you know, equipment deck, especially with Siona and Pure Steel and Nizan. This is just to this day, I think I covered this as a sleeper commander at some point just because People, I don't think, run it enough. And the hammer is just so good. I know it's all high <laughs> mana cost, but we're not playing CDH here. I really like Sovereigns mm-hmm. of La Solara, too. This is a card from around mm-hmm. when Jake and I got back into the game right at the beginning of college. And uh, I've always been a fan of this card. I think that's pretty cool. Any other, like, utility secret tech that you came across and you thought was like, hmm, this was a very good inclusion? Oh, 
I mean, he has uh, a fog in his deck. <laughs> Which one is that? No, oh, no, he doesn't. No, oh, yeah. Fog. I thought he did. Um, <laughs> I do the armadillo cloak, and I pulled spirit link. I might put it back in, but because they are the uh, life link, but not life link. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. it does. It gives the text Double of life link, yeah. so that way when I'm assault suiting, I'm getting life gain from other people. Oh, attacking yeah. with my commander and that's that's really what i love about the deck it's like my personal little like the salt suit it's just yeah you're so just and, and you're all in on galia assault suit i love it when you're playing somebody who has like a sacrifice effect yeah and I, that actually worked one week where um a player cast a, a board wipe that was everybody sacrifices everything but a party among creatures they control uh-huh and um he was like ah i got rid of galia i'm like wait no it the salt suit doesn't let them literally says get sacrificed. Can't be sacrificed. <laughs> it's such a good effect. Like even if you're not gonna pass around the card, like a, a I don't know if there's many other equipments that get like save you from sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the comments we're getting on this. I am actually surprised no Stoneforge Mystic in this deck. Why is that not here? Um budget, really. Just for budget. me personally. Like I was yeah. I, it was one of those cards that I wanted to buy one day and I was like, ugh. Because this yeah, is based on, a, too much money on the deck, your you know? actual deck you've had, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. And you, you're playing a two hundred and fifty dollar budget deck, you don't throw a forty five dollar Stoneforge Mystic in it. Tutor, baby, tutor. How are you gonna get yeah, that right. assault suit? It's. it's I mean, you can play open <laughs> armory. Um, for open the armory. Uh, Stone hero <laughs> giant for four dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah so many I mean, better. And that's what I was gonna say too. Is the Commander League is there's the the budget versions, right? of the same card and then i also threw a bunch of counter spells in and you'll see this one doesn't have many at all right um i don't really like counter spell magic but like just personally um but for a competitive league i'm trying to take first place i threw a bunch of counter spells in and that's it's just it's protection it's it's utility did you counter a lot respect. of stuff during the month absolutely oh yeah um so you were the galia you were the galia aura's counter spell deck where everybody was like does it resolve <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, chat. Uh, we're looking at his deck once it was upgraded to five hundred dollars after the league because he didn't have it saved at two hundred and fifty, and then plus whatever he put in. So this is like how you run it, right? This is how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how I play like with my friends at home, you know. Um, oh my God, Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. This one's about to explode in price. There it goes. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. That's and I also joke. I have a lot of scry lands here too, which this is the final version of the deck with tap lands in it. Right. The scry lands, like I'll hold that land in my hand until I need the scry. Yeah, for those sure. Work really scry. Well for that um, and then I have the indestructible lands in here for the um, aura ramp. I've um, that's I want to ramp with auras because it's uh, synergy with artifacts. I'm not. I'm. I think I'm no, missing aura. your point so on this. I have. Fertile Ground, Wolf of Haven, Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth. Yeah, so he plays All, those on his indestructible lands, so uh, they can't, they can't remove supported. the land. Yeah. Or Because if you have, like, Destroy Target permanent and it's got three auras on it, you're going to... Yeah, I'm going to blow the land up. Yeah, like, sucks for Wild Growth land and Fertile Ground to be on the upon, same but land, right? When you get that much value out of it, yeah, people will still blow up your lands. I see. I see. Yep. Well, rock and roll, man. I appreciate you talking to us about the deck. Congratulations on getting first... Yeah, thank you. I uh, yeah, it was a blast. Congrats. I tried to we throw this game. one into Mana Traders because I was like, maybe we'll get around to like actually playing a game with one of these decks tonight. Galian not released on MTGO. What the heck? Wow. <laughs> Hate that. <laughs> Hate that. Not a fan. It's too good. <laughs> J Rock, I appreciate you. Spectre, if you're around, you're going to be up next. Bobby, you said you played against J Rock. Yeah, I think we ended up playing twice last month because I think we started off in like week one, really? matched up, and then uh, we both ended up at the final table, yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Spectre, is that you? Yeah, what's going on, boys? What's up? Hey, How you buddy. doing? Not too bad. I actually played with J-Rock, too, because he, he kindly subbed for one of our matches. <laughs> did he? Did he kick your ass? No, I won. Oh, <laughs> that's the, that's the must have been his one loss that month. Uh, yeah, I I think I only took one loss to uh, week three. Well, uh, let's talk wise, about I, this I, because this has to be like of the year of pre-cons last year. Mm -hmm. This one's got to be one of the like least built, least Dude. hyped. Everyone 
hates Raynar. As soon as you pull Raynar out and they're like, that's not Brago, put that crap away. <laughs> right, right. I actually glanced at it and in my head I was like, I was looking through your creatures and I was like, wow, not, okay, so not a ton of ETB creatures. I wonder what he's flashing. I was like, shit, this is the Fortel guy. This isn't even Brago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a mix of, of of ETB stuff, but also you're, you're on the spirit tribal beatdown plan. Right. So, you know, Either people are going to try and wipe out the board state, you know, or, or do creature wipes, which right. is fine, you know, because that's the most threatening thing a lot of people see. Uh, so they potentially like will leave your teleportation circle, you know, on the board or they'll leave some of your other enchantments because they're just trying to wipe that stuff out. So you can still have all your ETB backup stuff, you know, and you just have a lot of uh, the flash uh, protection effects. Uh, that kind of give you a, a hand in, in surviving some of those wipes. What is it like to play? Let me pull up my search bar here. Where did my search bar go? What is it like with this deck to have a single set from which you can pull? Oh, because I'm not building right now. I'm, I'm an idiot. From which you can pull four tell cards. Because I, mean, I feel like a lot of people sleep on this commander because it's got the foretell keyword on it. And then they go to Scryfall and they search for O foretell with a commander that's only blue and white. And you get back. How many results are we going to get back here? I think there's 29, like 29. 29. Yeah, yeah. And some of these are yeah, they're terrible. Some of these are freaking arena. Hang on. Game paper. Give me a second. 27. And then, yeah, I mean, there's some good ones up here at the top especially for sorted by EDH rec rank. But uh, as we get down to the bottom, I don't think we're playing this three, six vigilant cat for four tell four. Are you it, kidding me? He's the sleep. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> never. Not at a thousand. <laughs> it pains me that they didn't make that commander Esper. Like it pains me. It would have been sweet in Esper, yeah. but it's one of those things that I think when you're playing in a league like this, you're trying to do something competitive. Sure. Uh, politicking is super hard like like you need to be good on your politics game and you need to look not threatening mm -hmm. um you know running up with rainer running up with galia people are like who, who are these terrible commanders like what are you doing oh that's you know? a good point yeah your sleeper out of the gate kind of yeah i mean until week two when everyone's like i played him last week don't don't listen to his crap <laughs> for sure <laughs> Or Jake shows up and tells everybody to just attack you anyway, right? Oh, no, right. just me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, just me. Okay. Um, I'm looking at <laughs> looking at your creatures here. I don't think I've ever seen Ambitious Farmhand played. What is this card? It's a third ramp spell. Uh, yeah. Don't the backside. You never use the backside. Got it's, you. It's, an ETB, it's just ETB ramp. Like the deck, because you're on a, a dual game plan of, yeah. hey, we want to do a bunch of flicker stuff but we need to protect our board state and things. So you want to play an instant speed, but you can't. Right. So you need a lot of mana to do both. Yeah, I see I see Knight of the White Orchid. I don't see, you didn't run that four drop. What is that dwarf? Isn't it some dwarf that lets you ramp planes and also creates- Yeah, he's right, he's right there. Or something? Stoic, Stoic, Stoic Farmer. Oh yeah, 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 this guy, this guy, there's another one. There's another guy too. But this guy was the better version basically. And it also comes with Fortel. Yeah. Yeah, he came with the deck. He wasn't the worst. Uh, it's weird to have a ramp card that you want your commander out first for, though. So it's kind of a little backwards, but, you know, kind of so, got to do what you do. Over the course of the, of the month, were you getting enough spirit creatures onto the battlefield with your shenanigans to justify oh, yeah. cards like, especially cards like Supreme Phantom, right? Like, this is just an anthem. You got to be right. absolutely crapping spirits for this card so, to have any play at all. We cut, I cut a, every anthem that wasn't Drog Skull at, at three mana got cut, like Empyrean Eagle and stuff. Yeah, Drog yeah. Skull only stuck around because he gives. It's hex proof the commander. I can see an argument yeah. for Drog Skull. It gives, you know, you get a residual plus one, plus one. Exactly. You also get the bigger thing that you care about, which is the hex proof. But when I saw cards like Supreme Phantom, that's where I was like, okay, I can't wait to talk to him about this one because yeah. it looks like you tried to ride the line between the synergies instead of going all in on one. And, you know, obviously it freaking worked. You placed third. Yeah, uh, I mean, building the board state's easy. The fact that that um, 
Raynar's thing is not only foretell that makes the spirits, it's right. exiling anything from the battlefield. So every time you're bouncing something, right. you make a spirit. Uh, every piece of removal in the deck is an exile effect. So, you know, you get it's it's a two for one uh, when you sword someone else's creature. Not only are you removing a threat, you get a spirit, too. Ah, that is yeah. a very good secret. I mean, not a secret, but like read it fully. Whenever you exile yeah. one or more cards from your hand and or permanents from the battlefield, it does not say you control. That's yeah. pretty cool. Exactly. I like that a lot. Yeah, so you get, you know, your welcoming vampire on the field. So now your swords is not only you remove something, you make a spirit, a body ETBs, you get to draw a card. Value like, town. Yeah, I mean, the deck was basically value town city. Uh, Archaeomancer, 23 cent sleeper hit. Well, I think everyone knows Archaeomancer is phenomenally good. Yeah, Archaeomancer able... gets a lot of play in these blink decks. I'm more surprised to see cards like Inspiring Overseer. It's a better um there was the dwarf i think yeah or whatever that was uh you know in the deck and you just needed more card draw on a body for so sure that's cool. for know? sure that's the tough part when you when you line into those you know those synergies is that's what you want you want to not just lean on blue for good card draw because obviously it's going to exist you know you're not hurting for card draw in these two colors but when you also really want to stick to those synergies which i think is a good point about building decks in general is go not you you a lot of times want to go for the more synergistic play because you're going to get extra value off of it yeah what well, one it's more fun too i think but a lot of these cards too like as you said inspiring overseer look at this card dumpster fire who's going to pay any mana to remove that that isn't incidental in a board wipe right yeah like seagate oracle look at two cards put one in your hand Huge. not a single person touched it drew eight cards in a game right well, nobody wants to use Terminate on Seagate Oracle. Exactly. Yeah. Like the uh, the the aggro to value is super low on these cards, you know, whereas Displacer Kitten. Yeah, talk to me card, about this one. Who knows? It gets removed every single time. <laughs> <laughs> it's that it's that card, it hits huh? the board, it's right. dumb. <laughs> like Seagate Oracle drew eight cards. Rhystic Study drew zero cards. Right. So, it's that's... one of those things. That's and I think funny. that's something, you know, when, you, when you're playing these games, like, do you need to run this $30 card? Maybe not, because people know that it exists and they're, and they're going to work to uh, get rid of it. Did you ever get Dead Eye Navigator soul bonded to Agent of Treachery? No, I had to bond it to my Seagate Oracle because I was out of land. So I was doing six mana draw a card. It was very exciting for that game. Yeah, that's not bad either. <laughs> I, just it was didn't rough. Know. I mean, I guess I'm I'm assuming it, since you're sitting here, that means that a giant hole to hell didn't open up and you fall in, which I think is what happens when a player successfully soul bonds Dead Eye Navigator to Agent Treachery is they just get immediately pulled down into yeah. the hell realm. But um, I, mean, I, I resolved both, but never at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so you're halfway there. Agent of Treachery will get you halfway there. Yeah. Hey, so... Do you get to play this card? Did it lead to any big moments? Cosmic Intervention. Uh, it, it saved a, uh, a board wipe, so that was nice. You know, it's one of those things you get to foretell it for free, so it's a two mana, you know, you can just basically survive a wipe that was coming, which Oh, it did. yeah. I've heard a lot of people recently talking about how this card's a sleeper right now because, I mean, look at it. It's $2, and... It, I mean, yeah, if it's the only card in, their, in your deck that's got foretell and you play it against the same people over and over again, they'll eventually learn it. But yeah, being I mean, able I was, to, it's like Tefri's, right? Yeah, I was picking up, I was picking up copies of this card at four dollars. I thought it was, I thought it was worth more than four dollars. Yeah, mean, yeah. I think it's just because that four man, like if this was just a two mana spell and foretell was off of here, I think mm -hmm. that it would be wildly run. But yeah, it'd be a old stringer just balance it yeah, yeah honestly like legitimately all-star but at four mana it balances out yeah luckily i kept trying to resolve to fairy's protection but jay kept countering the crap out of it oh really uh, <laughs> yeah luckily it doesn't exile that way so i kept using archaeomancer to put it back in my hand um which helped me i think win the last game i was able to establish like a pseudo small lock because i had a counter spell in the grave too so i was just able to keep bouncing a counter spell back to hand so i was you know able to kind of police the board state or what was going on so that was really helpful i've never seen this card i'm sitting here reading it four mana instant exile all non-token creatures you control 
Then you got what a 50 50 a little bit better of a 50 50 to return yeah. those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step or return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control then exile them again then return those cards to the battlefield under oh, yeah. their owner's control yeah. at the beginning so, of the next end step this is insane so the, the floor is cosmic intervention yeah exactly basically. yeah and you know the upside is oh i'll get all my etvs twice yes please 20 yeah i was counting yeah so it's a better than 50 percent chance you get to exile them reap bounce them exile them again that's cool yep i really like that card artifacts looking straightforward sort of hearth oh, and yeah. home this do any work for you uh it did a little bit of ramp it wasn't crazy good but you have enough evasive bodies with with all the fly the spirits that you're making that you can usually hit someone that doesn't have a flyer yeah and then you're bouncing something with an ETB again, Seagate Oracle or whatever. Uh, reconnaissance mission, no ETB value whatsoever, but because you have enough spirits, you can just, you know, get a lot of damage in. So you ran the four mana. We got the four mana blinker, but not, we're not running Conjurer's Closet. No, I didn't own it, slash. It's a little more expensive. Sure, sure. Yeah, and then, I mean, Reconnaissance Mission in a Spirits deck. I was running, uh, one of my best decks of the year was my Millicent deck in January. I think it was a preseason. And yep. cards like this in a Spirit deck, obviously Intangible Virtue, Cathars Crusade. If you're yeah. running some sort of tribal token off your commander I, strategy. Yeah, I think if you're, on, like when we were on the $100 budget, Distant Melodies in a tribal deck, if you're in blue, is a sleeper hit. The card mm -hmm. is so cheap and so good. Like four mana drop, six, eight, you know? Yeah. Oh, is this the card that, yeah, I always recommend people take this out of their pre -cons, So I'm the opposite <laughs> way on this one. I just, I don't personally like cards that they can be responded to and be nullified completely and just be a whiff. I really hate that. That's a personal That's play fair. style thing for me is I've, i'd rather I something with, say you definitely draw two versus you might draw six you might draw nothing yeah um it's it's over it's performed better than i thought it was good because i'm in the same boat as you i was like screw it let me play it for the hundred dollar weeks um uh, drew six cards twice with it and i was like okay well that yeah. feels pretty good yeah oh yeah I've, i'm definitely oh. definitely seeing ways that it could be excellent i gotta talk to you about this you're on restriction 30 lands 33 including modal 33? dfcs there's 33 lands there's, there's 33, 33 lands in this sec you're grounded <laughs> what am i grounded for you're i run grounded. so much i run so much card draw go find <laughs> three cuts and put three more lands in here uh, and you can be off restriction okay well one is the Eldrazi <laughs> displacer 100 percent. that card just is too much of an investment to put okay. down hang on let's talk about that what would your cuts be at this point because this is would be, so this is still your 250 version so we could yeah. at this point you know just add and take away from this as we want where's eldrazi yeah. oh here it is let's see what this does white and two for a three three devoid ah yes colorless the mana and two to exile another target creature then return to the battlefield looks sick for a deck like this yeah you know it's solid it's definitely saved me bouncing some not not bobby's but other people's wireless <laughs> you know during the combat <laughs> step so we can not have to deal with that but having not only like having because it needs to be a colorless pip to run that it can't be anything you know it's not three of anything you have to have you know a colorless mana in there so you know you better have your nimbus maze or whatever garbage right. land you know utility land on the field and you need it's six mana to, to get it going so it's like yeah you know it's not bad but you know that's where i would first do the cut ruin ghost is a sleeper man ruin yeah ghost is I was, this was going to be my other question for you was ruin ghost what do you bounce with it or do you just get i mean this basically says pay one tap it get a yeah. spirit at, at minimum you get a spirit out of it right? right which is fueling your army if welcoming vampires out uh you get a spirit and draw yeah, land which is draw but if you have three islands in mystic sanctuary on the battlefield yeah all of a sudden you're returning you know whatever your best instant sorcery in your graveyard is the salamander guy oh anthem mutineer he's solid too yeah i love this guy because nobody really realizes i don't think because this card's not played a lot 89 mm -hmm. cents as you can see but this is a four mana three three exile any freaking creature that you want in blue 
I don't oh, care that they get a 4-3. And then it encores, mm-hmm. and three come back, <laughs> and you get to exile three creatures. One, yeah. I think it's when it ETBs exile up to one target non-salamander creature. Oh, no. So you could just completely <laughs> curb stomp one person, right? The way I'm reading this, is that correct? And exile three of their freaking creatures on the encore? Yep. Yeah, that's brutal. This card isn't yeah. played I enough. Mean- I just bounced it a bunch. It's an exile effect. Raynar sees it. You know, we make more spirits. Uh, it's great. Got more you bounce it as much as you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this deck looks good, man. I had my toast burned by a Brago King Eternal deck in uh, in the early month season. Uh, early month of the season. And um, ever since then, I'm just super salty about all of the value that you just... You get off of cards like, you know, Loyal Warhound, Wall of Omens just the additive value of flickering etb creatures and that's an ability you have out of the command zone that's really strong yeah i mean that's the thing right like none of these creatures do you ever want to target none of it is good enough right i don't want to kill cloud blazer (laughs) yeah i'm good i don't need (laughs) any of that stuff right so it's like i mean two life two cards flicker this once and you're in value city and this is the kind of one that like you're saying it'll just get flickered over and over and over and over and over yeah until someone decides that they want to terminate it or something like yeah that's fine yeah you're like okay yeah. cool moving on yeah. or i'll just counterspell that now you wasted your terminate and i counterspelled it all right that's the other thing too in the league is that the the newer players it's it there's a bit of a learning curve in them running spot removal in their decks yeah. for sure I, yeah mystic reflection best defensive offensive blue spell maybe not the best but it is the most fun this is a card that Jake, I'm pretty sure, owns a couple yeah. suitcases of. Yeah, I think he has like 800 copies of <laughs> never it that really, he bought. Never really popped, yeah, like, which is surprising. Yeah. You see it and you it's, go, that's OP. I think he was buying them at like $4 a pop, well, too. So you see it and you say answer. that's OP. Most people, I think, see it and they're like, that's a lot of text, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. But it's a good card. It's a great card. I love yeah. it. Turning... Turning a Morphon into a 1-1 Spirit feels good mm-hmm. <laughs> when it comes out of the Commander Zone. Yeah. Spectre, final thoughts. What would you change? What would you keep? Any final thoughts on Raynar the Ever Watchful? Uh, I'd say as your mana base gets better, you're running a lot more fetches and stuff. Sure. Sun Titan can come back in as you have more targets for it. Okay. Uh, that's a good ETB, blank value, whatever. Oh, yeah. As I said, I think Eldrazi Displacer uh, was a little too much. Um some of the ramp is okay that ambitious farmhand isn't great you know maybe that's it's more rocks you know uh maybe something like an archaeomancer's map because you do have ways to flicker artifacts something like that uh i i think if you're trying to ride the, the line like this though i think this feels pretty good the only other ways i would say to do it is like, just go all in and either you're doing spirits or you're doing etb stuff i got you yeah yeah and honestly I, that's that is such a mindset for me when i go in, into building any commander is like what is my main line i'm going all in on that and then i'll kind of have a secondary a secondary turn off it's like with a deck that that i'll talk about of mine from the league this year tevish and Acroma. i had a primary strategy of aristocrats but i had one move i could pull you know and that's what I would use a chroma for out of the command zone was combine a chroma. I'm in black, so I can tutor anything. I pull a chroma onto the battlefield after I get Audric onto the battlefield. Audric gives all the tokens that I've been creating for my aristocrats deck the whole time. All abilities that are on the battlefield. A chroma gives them all plus one plus, And it's like a final swing, you know. But I'm yeah. so... I always get so one track minded on this is the strategy that's what i'm going all in on so it's cool to see a deck you know take down third place in a league uh that's that's a nice balance for a underplayed commander quite honestly thanks man uh i'd say uh to chat uh please come join the commander league it's a ton of fun (laughs) um if you can kind of come with whatever you want and you'll have a good time if you want to be competitive i would say play test your deck know your deck as, as well as you can, you know, and ask to I'm, see some winners there. I mean, everybody will post yeah. their deck list. We, we, uh, unify all of our deck lists for the league on Moxfield. 
And so a lot of people are super willing to like give you tips and tricks on your deck. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, the, the, the fix my deck posts are going off. Like I feel a little better posting it and, and helping people now that hey, I, I feel like, yeah, I, that's, like I'm doing okay here. Discord added <laughs> that forum feature and I was like, this is what we wanted. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. The forum feature is, yeah. is really nice. Well, Spectre, I, I, I appreciate really, really the like I appreciate the shout out for the league. You read that script. I sent you perfectly. So thank you yeah. very much. No, for no, that. No. <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah. So yeah, know your deck. Uh, play tested a bunch. There's plenty of people play testing looking, you know, there's looking for game, you know, shout out to that part of the discord too. Uh, if you want to just kind of test, get to know what you're up to, get in some games, but uh, be prepared to politic, uh, get to know people, talk it up, have some beers, have a good time. But uh, yeah, I mean that I, I, I would have lost a few games had it not been for uh, 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 I'm not a threat. Look at that guy. Look at that Xyrex over there, man. Like he's just popping off, doing oh, crazy yeah. stuff. I think I think we need to team up and kill him. That's my that's favorite just... part of the game, quite honestly. Uh, that's why Jake, always, you know, like his meme is everybody kill Joel, just kill Joel, just don't even think about it, because that he's. We've played a lot of games where I <laughs> I was able to <laughs> sneaky snake my way out of some shit and end up winning. You know, getting that one extra turn that's gonna help me win or whatever. Yeah. Through like. You know diverting Dude, attention the, uh, or making a deal or whatever i think i think my trademark move is like the jerry worm butt wiggle in the air try to look as pathetic as possible and it's yeah. like uh, and then like then i can come from behind and, and, and look playing late in the pod that's a strategy i've seen i've seen bobby weasel some games where he's just like got a full ass hand he plays one thing per turn keeps seven <laughs> never presents a threat people are like well i don't want to i don't want to I don't want to instigate, you know, I'm not going to attack him. He's obviously doing nothing over there and somebody's getting eliminated and Bobby's coming out of the woodwork all ready to go. Yeah. I'll, 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 uh, I'll go like basic land and then, uh, the temple to give you no maximum hand size and then just sit there yeah, with just, the, just straight gas. And then I'll even like take a turn off where I don't even play a land when I have like four in my hand, just so people start to feel bad for you. <laughs> oh, for and sure. then no one attacks you and and then in one turn you just lay your hand out you know this yeah. is not Joel. commander advice not financial advice <laughs> not commander advice nobody listen you, to bobby if, if you draw soul ring in your opening hand what turn don't do you play? play it Ooh, you, you dude, play it turn three so you can hit turn six three? on four oh. well i like yep. it i i That's like four. being able to get to six mana on turn four and so am i doing that math right yeah yeah, turn three is five, and then your six mm -hmm. land drop. Yeah, that's that's when I would play it. There's no point in playing it on turn one unless you've got Command Tower, that's Soul Ring, Signet, in which case, yeah. if you do that, I think it's kind of like whatever that thing is you assemble in Yu-Gi-Oh! and you automatically win. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Exodia. Uh, yeah, thank you, Exodia. <laughs> <laughs> right, but like... We've all had it, and like I think when everyone started playing Commander first, like Soul Ring, Soul Ring, turn one, easy peasy. Like I'm on curve, this makes sense. But what it doesn't, what it doesn't say, the hidden text on Soul Ring is like take ten damage. Yeah, you know, yeah, for the next two easily. Turns. Oh, yeah, yeah, easily. It's like oh, I hate this sandbag. Everything. The first threat yeah. you played is getting aced. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Look, Spectre, thank you very much. Appreciate you being on. Everybody claps for Spectre. Hey, we got a. We got a Bobby deck to go through here in a second. Cool. Hit me up later. I got all my 40k decks, so we can play whenever you get yours. Ooh, I might actually take you up yeah. on that. I was gonna run a little thing and see if we need to like randomize who wants to play. If there's enough interest in playing those Warhammer decks on stream, I might randomize it. Or if there's not enough interest, we'll just take whoever wants to play and has you know all four of them, so that we can play all four of them differently. You know what I'm saying? And so sure, man. Um, I'll hit you up about that. They should be here. I'm assuming. I don't know if Brody's in chat. I'm assuming they'll be here by the beginning of next week. So I'll be ready for that. Jake will have his too. That'll be a good time. Oh, for sure. Take these boys. Lay it up. See you, bud. Bobby's so which one? Which one do you want to look at? Do you want, I think you want to look I'm, at Dean or you want to look at Wyleth? I think I'm, I'm mostly known for being a dirty Boros Voltron player. Dirty Boros Voltron. <laughs> that Dina right. deck. All, all that Dina deck did was get Dina on the field, protect her, find a tutor, and play Exquisite Blood to win. That's all that deck did. Yeah. So it's not really the, the funnest deck to Wee, go. And exquisite look at. Blood victory. Wee! Yep. All right. Give me two um, seconds for a bio. 
the channel is yours for the next minute and a half. Do whatever you All want right. with it. Cool. We're going to have, uh, I'm going to put some music on. I've got the, some videos of Joel dancing, um, in a speedo from back when he was 14. We'll play those. Yeah, the other thing that the Dino deck, uh, Dina deck did was, uh, uh, I play a Professor Onyx chain of smog combo, and then I played the, um, the Liliana from M19, um, that has the minus three ability where you can play zombie cards from your graveyard, and I had, uh, the, uh, skeleton that when it died, it, uh, you could create a treasure token. Um, so I would sack it to, uh, um, an altar, get a mana, and then play it from my graveyard for one. So I would just create infinite mana that way. Are we a flesh and blood channel now? Yeah, we are. Oh my god, I don't even know how to play about, it yet! I'm just talking about how much I love playing Mechanologist in the new meta. I don't even know what those words mean, bro. <laughs> Let me do a little resort here so we got a better looking. Uh, we're gonna go by mana value. I like looking at it by mana value. That's how my brain thinks. Yeah. I mean, pretty much flesh and blood is magic Voltron, but you get to start with like uh, a few equipment out and a weapon. And it's one-on-one. -on -one. Let's swap over and take a peek at this. So did you place with this deck? Yes, yeah, so this is like the third time I played Wyleth. Um, I don't have the, the one that I came in second with um, saved. Uh -huh. And this deck here... But this is a 250 version. Yeah, this deck here could have won. Um, I was not... Ex I mean, uh, a player just... I, I attacked in the wrong turn order. So had I attacked uh, one player before I had attacked the other one, I would have ended up winning that week. Um, but once, uh, you know, the player that I left alive was able to untap, the next time I went to kill him, he was able to uh, take care of Wyleth, so. So with the Wyleth discussion, point. let's start here. How many Boros commanders have you played? And is this the best Boros commander for auras and equipments? For auras and equipments, yeah. Wyleth is ridiculous you just load them up you swing on the attack trigger you get to draw a card for each or or equipment attached to it like you i'm drawing and it comes with trample i love yeah. that just and trample? It comes with trample love it. yeah so i mean i'm swinging in for like huge amounts of of damage i'm usually got four five six eight equipment auras on him so i'm drawing like nine you know eight, nine, ten cards a turn. Yeah. Like, it, it, it gets just crazy. What sort of strategies, counter strategies, are absolutely backbreaking for this? When did you lose? What was what was really annoying to stop you from doing what you wanted to do? If, uh, you know, there's something where each player has to sacrifice, you know, X amount of creatures, um, that'll do it. Um, sacrifice but... effects. Yeah, you just have to have um, ways to, to blink him or, you know, get around it somehow. Or, um, you know, once the board's wiped, you just pay the commander tax on him. And then once he comes in, like, everything just reattaches pretty much. And you just go back to, to putting in some work. So obviously, Jessica's good. I think we know Jessica. Everybody knows Thrice Reborn. Crazy that that's a $3 mythic now. I remember that hype being way higher when it came yeah, out yeah i mean the big thing is if you can get kethis out so that when um wyleth is hitting one player all the players are taking damage with jessica's ability Kethis. Out. yep this gotcha yep so yeah. whenever a commander you control yeah yeah i'm seeing a lot of the greatest hits here i actually don't know selfless samurai when a samurai or a warrior you control attacks alone it gains lifelink and oh it's got the dog ability to sack it and then uh -huh. something gains indestructible that's so good yeah, so it just just so happens that wyleth is a warrior so when he attacks alone because uh, he's going to be attacking alone he gets lifelink love and then if that. somebody tries to kill him you can sacrifice the samurai to keep wyleth alive yep. the card 
is amazing in this deck. Amazing art too. Really love that card. I mean, Just kind of all around. We're gonna get to this one in a second, but I do wanna. I do want to just mention Ray of this one is a card that I've been very interested in playing for a long time, but I just mm -hmm. haven't ever built a straight up deck for it, you know? And so is this one that did ex like hard work for you when it came out? Oh yeah. So Especially when, Ray of, when you get Ray of out on turn two, you yeah, turn two, say uh, the, the God opening hand is you are able to get hammer out on turn one, Ray of Odd on turn two. So we'll two. go Cos Colossus Hammer into Ray of. <laughs> into Ray of, into Wyleth. Obviously, yeah, Wyleth and then on, on three. And then turn four is Pure Steel Paladin or uh, Brunar. Or even Arden, honestly. Yeah. Uh, or even Arden. Arden's and then gonna you can, automatically do it. You just attach the hammer right on to right on to uh Wyleth. he becomes a 12 12 trample double striker <laughs> with with double strike <laughs> and that you draws just swing you cards. In. yeah and then you draw a card that's insane so i mean if a player doesn't have a, a blocker they just have a one one or a two two that's commander damage you're out right so we got yeah we know these are in here same kind of stuff for this it's card advantage togo's creating is this is the idea here just extra equipment on yep on wyleth for extra so, card draw yeah i mean that's the thing is you play a land you get a rock you can usually attach the rock for free and then you get to draw a card when you attack yeah silent arbiter staple in this kind of deck because you want to be attacking with your one big thing most likely and you want to be saved from crackbacks i gotta mm -hmm. say i've never seen <laughs> this in a deck in my entire life please explain fire ants to me so what you want to do with fire ants is once you are able to give wyleth flying or even if wyleth that can't get flying and someone has a go wide strategy what you want to do is equip the fire ants with a basilisk collar. Okay. So if you read basilisk collar. Oh yeah, death touch lifelink. I'm just trying to put it together in my head. This is a weird roundabout thing you got going here, Bobby. <laughs> so you're um, you're being able to what? Wipe the board repeatedly for non-flying yeah. creatures? Yep, it wipes all non-flying creatures off the board. You get one life life link for each creature that that died as well is this doing it to itself each other okay mm -hmm. and then you just hopefully what have an indestructible effect on wyleth or something yep build around it that way which you usually do because there's a lot of auras in here that to give him indestructible or protection from creatures yeah yeah this looks good i'm liking your instant package here Rebuff the Wicked, underplayed card. Oh my god, that card puts in work. <laughs> Straight up because counter spell. As soon as, yeah, Ugh. because someone will just be like, uh, I'm going to Swords Wyleth before I can get boots on him or something, and I'm just like, for one white mana, nope, counter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Love any deck that just straight up plays Disenchant. Uh, You're just like, I want to fucking Disenchant, bro. Yeah. And I don't want to pay four for it to, to take out two. Right. You know what I mean? I just want to take out one thing. That one thing, obviously, an all-star mm -hmm. in this kind of deck. I love that you snuck a fog a fog in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a fog. And deflecting palm is just like, it's so much fun when someone's like, oh, I, you're tapped out. And so I'm going to swing at you for whatever. Or I'm going to make infinite mana and hit you with a fireball for like one one trillion you're just like nope deflecting palm <laughs> right yeah chat i'm seeing a lot of comments about voltron either being like not a super played for a uh, uh, deck type anymore or it's easy to defend against bobby I've, i played a lot of voltron voltron was how i started uriel the mist stalker was my first ever commander mm -hmm. and sacrifice effects obviously really screw up the game plan you got to run enough other creatures to really get away around those or ways that you know can make you not have to sacrifice things also token decks the beauty of this voltron commander is that it comes with trample because trample is the answer to chump blockers chat mm -hmm. if you are playing a voltron deck and so 
Like Menace is good in a deck like this. It's probably better than the average deck to have Menace at your disposal. But Trample, that is the way that you can push a deck like this over the top for sure. And and there's multiple ways to give Wyleth protection from creatures or, right. or, or, or protection from colors. That's exactly what I was going to say next is I bet we yeah. go down here and, I see, and we see Spirit Mantle and we see Unquestioned Authority. Yep. Skip drawing a card. Bobby, you always got the weirdest freaking cards in your deck. Let's read this, this one. Yep. This Island one's a Sanctuary. <laughs> Skip drawing a card. I'm assuming Which the I, Oracle text here. Let's read the Oracle well, text on this. So the reason why I don't care if I'm skipping my draw step. Uh huh. Because you're drawing a uh, ton of cards. Because it, as soon as I attack, I draw five or six cards. Right. You've got this dual strategy here where. You know, when you're building a commander deck chat, you're kind of looking at what do I have at coming out of the command zone? Do I have a win con? Do I have card advantage? Do I have ramp? What are you looking out of the command zone? And that sort of determines how you flavor the rest of your deck. And mm -hmm. so it's interesting with Wyleth because you've got both coming at you at once. You've got a win con and you've got card advantage. And that can be a pro and a con, right? Because if, if you just absolutely get targeted down by all three people, it will be very difficult to just keep Wyleth alive through three people all on slotting you. But a lot of times that doesn't really happen and you kind of have to time out and play well, right? When you're piloting the deck. It's also important to try to, before you go to pop off, to have a bunch of Island Sanctuary, Pillow 40 right. type of effects in play, like um, Ghostly Prison and stuff like that. So people can't attack you a lot of the time. Island Sanctuary. A white and one for an enchantment. Jake's favorite permanent type because they're sticky. If you mm -hmm. would draw a card during your draw step, instead you may skip that draw. If you do, until your next turn. You can't be attacked except by creatures with flying <laughs> and or island walk. Yep. Card is amazing. So except by creatures with flying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is what this card says. The yep. and or island walk, that is very rare. Actually, mm -hmm. now I want to see what are the best cards in EDH with Island Walk. Okay. Wait. Where the text includes Island Walk? Oh, well, that's... Look at this. Island. Cold Eye. Oh, yeah. You're creating people the play. tokens with Island Walk. Cold Eye. Cold Eye sees play. People, people play Cold Eye. People play Master of the Pearl Trident in a, a Merfolk deck. But how yeah. often do you see someone playing a Merfolk deck? I've seen... I've seen Rex Seal on the battle battlefield a few times in my day. Storm yeah. Tide. Storm back Tide, not so much. Way back in the day, yes. Same with Inkwell. That was yeah, a banger back no one, in the day. But yo, dude, no yeah. One, no one plays any of these cards. No. After after like the first two, you fall yeah. off a shelf, I bet, as far as percentage mm -hmm. played. So yeah. Island Sanctuary, I mean, Secret Commander Tech. Yeah. Well, short coming out soon. Yeah, smoke, smoke puts in, <laughs> puts in so much work. The card right next to it. Yeah, smoke is ridiculous. Card. Yep. This is so good for a deck like this. Um, yep. I'm thinking of with Island Sanctuary. Is it Glacial Chasm? Because it's the same kind of thing. I think from uh, Ice Age. It's a white and a blue. Yeah, I think. this is it. This is it. Oh Here's yeah, a yeah. Battlefield. The you're sacking a land. And creatures you control can't attack, but you prevent all damage that will be dealt to you in the right deck. This is the kind of thing, too, where you're like, you don't care about this. You don't care about that at all. Yeah. This does kind of get cumulative, but, you know, it is if if you're in a life gain deck or if you're in the kind of deck where it's going to be gaining you some back, it can last even longer. Or you just sack it when you get to your next upkeep and you're like, all right, well, I can't pay 20, but I've had a ton of, I mean, in, in particular, my... Uh, my Heartless deck, I've got a mono red Heartless Hitatsugu deck, and in that deck deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down. You play Glacial Chasm right before you do it. You're preventing all damage that will be dealt to you, period, not just combat damage. Love these like back, I, backdoor techs to yeah. not take damage or be unattackable. And when I'm playing combo decks, I run chasm and i sandbag it until i'm about to like i'm like okay i can combo off on this turn right and then i'll play chasm exactly like that turn before i pop off oh yeah for sure just in, case in, it, just in case it gets you know 
you know broken up or something or something or a lot of damage happens to you or something yeah um that's that's the same thing with heartless you know you get your double your damage doubler on the field you figure out how to get heartless onto the battlefield with haste so you can activate it immediately play glacial that turn do you know everybody's life total of damage to everybody or leave everybody at one or whatever and you're still up in the 30s yeah it's how to put a nice little target on yourself <laughs> sphere of safety ghostly prison totally just stacking these things these kind of abilities oh and fighters class like fighters class is ridiculous for boros mana yeah newer card when it eats like, bees you search your library for an equipment straight up into your hand wow yeah. and then for three you equip abilities you activate cost two less to activate and that just becomes an ability on this enchantment right so it just stays mm -hmm. the rest of the game Mm -hmm. And then whenever a creature you control attacks up to one target creature blocks it this combat if able so you get to pick what you kill Yeah, so I mean Towards the end of the game you can use it to like take out people's dock sides or take out their um, Ristic buddies and stuff like that yeah. take out their commanders like when your commander's a 2020 trample right. Like your commander has to block it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Just any creature kill them all all the glitter staple, cigar aids aid staple. I saw this and I did think about this. Sparks said solitary confinement could be good here. Do you think about solitary in this deck? Yeah, I think it was uh, like my card 101 actually. Oh, really? Yeah, so you were yep. close. Don't take advantage of the considering tab on Moxfield, I see. No, like I, that's, that's my deck. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at these utility lands. You got anything interesting oh, down uh, here? I, ice flow. I saw it. I'm going to type it in up here so we have the Oracle text on it. Ice flow. Ice age. Oh, yeesh. Oh, here we go. Cards you totally forget about. Mm -hmm. You know them. You've seen them. Internet's not loving me tonight. Here we go. You may choose not to untap it during your untap step. Tap it. Tap target creature without flying that's attacking you. Weird. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as ice flow remains tapped. So like it, it's worded like this to get around vigilance. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Interesting. You got all this. It's interesting how much thought and prep you've put into defensive tech in your Wyleth deck because yeah, you mean, would think Wyleth aggro only build aggro stuff into it go to the you know just balls to the wall but you've yeah, got but, that defense going but what happens when Wyleth gets blanked or you're going up against a go wide strategy like if you're gonna get taken out you need to be able to play defense yeah is this just a pet tech for you Mephalia Academy yeah, I, I you always run this card uh, in budget builds just because if someone's going to make me um, discard a card, I I don't want to discard my cards. I like my cards in my hand, so <laughs> I'll just... <laughs> I like my like, cards in my hand. You heard it here, chat. I mean, plus if, you know, you're going up against... Yeah. Would you play this with, like, a three-color deck? Uh, Yeah, maybe. I like Nefalia Academy. Jake was so high on this card when it came out. Roadside Reliquary. Yeah, Roadside Reliquary. And you get, you know, turn 10, turn 11, just sack it and go draw two cards. Yeah, I mean, in this kind of deck, it just, it smacks for sure. It smacks yep, the for only sure. Reason, the only reason why there's one snow-covered island and one snow-covered mountain in the deck is because I've got those uh, foil etched pixel art ones from the secret lair that are just <laughs> super cool yeah uh that's the other thing too is so when we're playing on moxfield we're set for like whatever the lowest priced printing is yeah so when i'm actually playing this deck the entire deck is like foil blinged out for sure it, it's it it's not a 250 dollar deck when i'm playing it but um that's part of what we have built into it so it's 250 dollars for whatever the, the with the prices on the individual cards at whatever the lowest priced printing of that card is but you if you've got the blank versions should by all means play the blank versions i took credit for making this price explode on this card for a little while mm -hmm. 
I had a short they, explode with that I mean, card. Read, read the card for Wyleth. Like it's 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 just stupid. Oh, oh dude, yeah. This card is so chat, this says in the middle there's really all you need to know. Whenever equipped creature deals damage to a blocking creature, Kasari Gama deals that much damage to each other creature defending player control. So it's like, oh, you wanna block? You took trample away somehow and you wanna block? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Just kill six wipe your six board. power <laughs> with this deck ain't that hard to get to. And six toughness is gonna wipe pretty much most EDH things off the board. The Wyleth is usually somewhere between a 10 or a 15 with double strike. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let me see. Time we at 11 o'clock. I wonder how much of this list is already available on MTGO. Most of the equipment in, in, most of the equipment and auras in this deck are stuff that gives you plus one, plus one, or plus one, plus zero for each artifact or equipment that's either on him or on your board kind of right. thing too so i mean it, it, it's built so that you just uh -huh. i i had a lot of um equipment in here that costs zero yeah uh, initially just because i'm like well it costs zero equips for one or whatever but they, you're just drawing more cards right and those those cards don't make the cut because you need the defense give me two replacements i want to play a quick game with this deck and see how it does what do you think you need what do you need replacing mantle of the ancients so oh. it's something kind of annoying is that mtgo doesn't get oh, okay. every single card and so but it is rare that a car a deck is fully here 100 cards and only missing like two only missing oh, like we're one replacing we're replacing two-handed axe and mantle of the ancients and we'll get a little game going that's a fun way to end this all stream. right so instead of the the two-handed axe Two-handed axe is nice because it you can use the um, the the storybook side to give a creature double strike. Right. And then after that, you can play it as the equipment, which just doubles his power. I think. Um, well, we probably want to go one for one with replacements of equipment here, right? Yeah, yeah. So take out that equipment. Put in. I think it's Gold Dervin pick from the first uh, from AFR. Gold vein pick? Yeah, gold vein pick. Yep. Yep. That's a good one. And a classy one too. It's just cheap, budget. Yep. And then um instead of uh mantle the agents is like So good. That's that's your card for if Wyleth gets off the board, like Right. Um That's one of the biggest missing pieces on MTGO for uh for I think a, for it, a enchantment decks right now. I think it's missing uh one pair of the one pair of boots because of the budget so i think um i think we just put boots in oh uh uh i can't think of words right now <clears throat> i think i saw that you had some in here okay so you got swift foot yeah so let's put in the other boots what are the other boots called lightning greaves thank you boots is not gonna get me there that's why i couldn't I think mean, of it i was like boots yeah. boots boots what are they called I I, I just call them both boots, so. <laughs> lightning Greaves. So throw Lightning Greaves in, 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 in place of that. Hi, booyah. There you go. They can run it. Let's rent this deck and play it. I think that'll be fun. We're going to pilot Bobby's deck here and see <laughs> how we do. The problem is we're going to be playing against, like, everything, baby. Deck. It's going to be awesome. Let's go to the collection. Let's go. Whip. Man, I have been playing Dehada. That's been my recent obsession. This is the pre-con version of it, and this is my upgraded version of it. Oh, baby. This deck yeah. is... Did you watch the... Did you get to watch any of the stream where I played this deck? Uh, I went to bed before you started playing it, I Sheesh. think. Dude, yeah. this deck is so, so mean because of the minus three. Reveal the top four. Put any number of legends in, into your hand mm -hmm. if you want. Everything else goes in the graveyard, and you can choose all four to go in the graveyard. Create a treasure token for each card put into your graveyard this way. So you choose all four unless you just need that, like, you know, we got a lot of legendary lands in here, some artifacts. We got a legendary of everything that, you know, you could need if it exists. 
within the context of a game and you can pick that out and get three treasure tokens or just dump it all in the graveyard run a bunch of reanimate bing bang boom you're you're ramping with a mardu planeswalker yeah i actually played this deck stock against like three decks one was maybe a five and then a, there was like a, a you know a six and a seven yeah uh, and i uh, because i was going up against higher power levels and i was playing at stock for the first time i ran the uh the creature and not the uh planeswalker oh yeah shannon made the 99 of the deck because of the draw ability the menace is really good because you do end up a lot of times winning with this deck with one big swing but it's whenever you play a legendary land or cast a legendary spell. I mean, sorry, whenever you cast a legendary spell or play a legendary land, that's the huge one. Your legendary lands turn into card draw, lose a life. Oh, so good. Yeah. And it, there's like a, a weird amount of like life gain in this deck too. So like I was drawing lots of cards, but it wasn't really hurting me. Bobby's winning deck. And we got to choose the Boros icon for it, Abby. Obviously. And That's I only fine. play this. What? I only play this deck with a Boros mat, too. Well, unfortunately, we can't do that in MTGO, but what we can do is jump in. Hey, if any of you are MTGO players and you want to play, come on over. Come on over. I was mad at somebody last time on stream named caesar for bringing a cedh deck into our casual game and so i named my next room no cedh caesar <laughs> oh let's just name it to jam stream yeah all right we're gonna get a little mtgo going tonight to end the stream up i appreciate everybody hanging out um like i said this is a format that has been long requested and i've wanted to do it for a long time so i hope everybody enjoyed it we're gonna cool down what i'd like to do with these streams is you know go over three or four decks and then play one of them i think that'd be the most fun and so we are going to do that right now on your way out if you would hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you don't want to hang out and watch a game played other than that just a casual night just chilling waiting on the weekend I'm going to grab another beer. Do it. I'll be right here. Yeah, Joe, I will. I will. This oh, has been gosh. fun. I should have worn my um, wide up sweatpants. My bad. I do like that you wore your Washington Nationals hat. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Actually, I got this hat in Montreal. Oh, really? Nice. I figured you wouldn't be wearing a Mets hat tonight. Yeah, eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we need four more likes to get to 69? Hell yeah. Oh, D Hammer, of course. And that's what I was saying. D Hammer said the new owners of MTGO will add virtual playmats as a first feature. Yes, and they should. Why not? Make this platform. I am not opposed to them putting in accepted monetization trends of the industry into this game to make this game make more money so that they can make this game better. This is the premier digital client for Commander, and it sucks. It's fine. People love it. You know, I love it. I've played it all the time, but I've grown to love it for all of its inconsistencies and all of its shortcomings. But with this new developer, hopefully, I mean, they've done EverQuest and like Justice League Online or whatever that thing's called, and they've got... A portfolio of successful games maybe not games that anybody plays that that is here right now they should have just threw a bunch of money at square enix and they just had them be <laughs> built it something man <laughs> something i just it is i've t i can't i've tweeted so many times about this i just cannot understand why in 2022 we are commander players are being sucked dry in paper and not digitally that doesn't make sense to me give us the opportunity to play the game online as well and try and replicate it the best you can have you ever played bobby have you ever played on a tabletop simulator chat anybody of y'all ever played on tabletop simulator 
Uh, I've only played Flesh and Blood on Tabletop. With Tabletop Simulator, is there any way I could get in there and like be a director? So can I like spectate the game that somebody else is playing and like, you know, fly around the table, zoom in and out? Is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. GL Films, do you understand what I'm asking? Mm -hmm. You said you played. So I would be able to do that. I could spectate. I've been thinking about that as a way to have sort of a, a, a you know, long distance. All right, we're going to leave this one, see if we can just join somebody's in progress. $50 TCG market budget decks, five to seven power level, please. I don't think we can walk in there with our 250 What does it say, though? Oh, it said $50 budget $50 decks. $50 TCG budget deck, and we brought... We brought we 250. 250. Let's try that. 250 budget. <laughs> TCG player market budget. Let's roll. Yeah, Baitmaster, it is it is you know, it's hard to hard to politic online. A lot of times it just becomes like kind of min max or wildly salty like you attacked me first so for no reason now i'm just going to come at you because you're an invisible person on a screen and i don't care that kind of thing bob are you good to hang around for like another hour yeah man i'm chilling i okay, just cracked cool. a uh a, i just cracked a tall boy so we're good gotcha beautiful i i'm sure, drinking sure. uh the young lion hey a a a Hey, 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 hells. It's got, it's got Buffalo Bills Zubas. Nice. Design. Yeah. We're going to, wife and I are going to go do a little night away. Uh, Friday night, tomorrow night. We're going to go hit up some fall festival action in the North Georgia mountains. Nice. Go see some yep. changing color trees. Yeah. And we lived in mass for two years and I got to say, I miss that shit. Yeah, man, I'm in upstate. Like, the foliage around here is, like, insane right now. Like, red and yellow and orange. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, you gotta sense the salt, bait master. <laughs> well, I'll say while we're waiting here on some opponents, Bobby, thank you for the commander, Lee, pal. Yeah, man. You brought us, you brought us a gift to the community. Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to get um, during during lockdown, just get games organized. Right. And we had a we had enough people that wanted to play like pretty much nightly because nobody was fuck you know no one was doing anything else. Yeah. So um, and we just got a league organized, and it it just kind of there was enough people who wanted to to join wow. so. It takes it takes a lot. When Bobby first mentioned it to me, I was like, "Bro, we can we can't even stay consistent with our long form." And you know, like we can do a short a day. We got that on lock. We got like a long form a week. We got that on lock. We'd like maybe one or two more of those, and definitely like two streams a week. It's just tough, man. Full time full time job. Now I got the baby yeah already feel guilty sitting i work from home so i'm in my office all day i've never played on cockatrice either Corey, i'm butchering that pronunciation no you're good is transformers gonna count as universes beyond it won't be out in time yeah yeah i know it won't be out but is that is that considered universes yeah. beyond I think I think it is. They're just inserting it randomly into Brothers War. So dumb. It's weird to me, and we haven't even talked about this on the channel yet. Jake and I haven't <laughs> even made a video yet. But it's weird to me that Damn, we can't get a game tonight. Oh shit, missed that one. That was the fifty dollar one though. They don't want you in there. No, no, no. No, it's this one right here. Aren't there just three dudes sitting right there? Oh, that's for Brawl. One, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't Why are a... people playing Commander one-on-one? -on -one? 
Yo, there's a lot of people playing Commander one on one in MTGO. It's weird. And it's yeah. strange to me. To me, it's not weird. They can do whatever the hell they want. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, Sparks. It's the same with any online. I mean, even Spell Table to me hasn't been. You don't. I mean, at least you get voice right. It kind of forces you into a voice situation. But you're not face camming. You can kind of politic a little bit. Yeah. At least with Cockatrice and Tabletop Simulator. You know, you got you got that table interaction. You can do some politicking. Yeah, I bought this Kit Kanto. Kit Kanto Mayhem Diva. This one was one of the ones on sale, and I told Jennifer, I was like, I'm buying you a commander deck. <laughs> yeah, for 20 bucks, yeah. It's her oh, we got it's definitely her thing. Playing playing creatures token creatures really likes token creatures it really sucks that so, so and the goat ability is insane on that the this person's got the ellie wick uh avatar it, it it really sucks that the the dungeon planeswalker is in green which has like zero dungeon support oh, dude. <laughs> they, like, what are you doing we end up getting crapped for commander uh, players and commander builds because they want to make sure that they don't run into like energy again or some mechanic that they can't keep the lid on in standard and so we end up getting these off color options that aren't going to you know fit into the deck it'd be great if we could go back to kaladesh i actually can't believe with all the money making stuff that they've been trying to do i had i had money on that announcement day a month ago two months ago being like we're going back to kaladesh and you can and the open energy card. yeah exactly well those pop they announced that they're going to do another masterpieces run or some shit mm -hmm. and it, you know suddenly we got real lotto pull cards in in boxes again i mean can you ma imagine going kaladesh re return to kaladesh and collector booster boxes of that we didn't have yeah. collector boosters when Kaladesh and Aether Revolt came out. Imagine collector boosters in a set that's about making pretty artifacts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Insanity. Yeah. 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 Any anything that stays on the board, everyone wants in whatever the bling mm -hmm. blingiest foil version of. So tactics. That's a good. That's a good call. The one on one players are playing Canlander. Will MTGO let you do that? Oh, we got we got two. We just need one more. We need one more player. This never takes this long. I don't understand especially what's going on, on tonight. Especially on stream, like you would think someone would hop on to play. Typically, I don't have this hard of a time. Hey, if you want to play MTGO, you do not need cards on your account. You just go sign up for a, a, a service like Mana Traders. And for like th around 30 bucks a month, you can rent up to 400 ticks at a time. Ah, somebody left. Mm. We're just going to watch this. Make sure that no... Uh, yeah, and I I know that most of the uh, the Jajam community are made up of commander players, but I'm uh, in uh, right now brainstorming and in, in getting oh my god um, I getting ink to paper um, for a, uh, a legacy league one one v one legacy league proxy friendly. Uh, but they'll we'll put restrictions on that too. So there like, we go. There we go. Got a game to make. You would describe this as strong, not CDH, right? That's how they labeled their room. Yeah. Hey, we won the die roll. I mean, for a two hundred and fifty dollar deck, it it's it's strong. I, I've I've played Wyleth enough that the deck is is pretty tuned. I can't keep this, right? You you need white. You can't keep this like most of the deck is white here we go we can definitely keep this 
Um, I'm tempted to just to Jerry Shelter turn one. How would you play this out? I mean, I like Sajiri Shelter because then uh, I use spell. that to save to save Wyleth. For sure. But, I mean, we're looking at... I gotta get a little bit closer here. So you got... She's uh, a three mana spell, three mana spell, three mana spell. Wyleth is three mana. What did we draw? Clifftop Retreat. Oh, Clifftop Retreat. Um, I think we go Sajiri Shelter as a, a white source... Or actually, Clifftop Retreat, we need to have an uh, a mountain or a plains, right? Yeah, a mountain or a plains on the battlefield. But that can be our Every, third everything, drop. So everything is, everything is... Yeah, that could be our third drop. Okay, yeah. We'll go to Jury Retreat as a, as a white source, I guess. But we don't have any other plays, and I don't know why we would we'd keep it. We just... Yeah. Yeah, it's early. <laughs> Yep. Drop the land early. Now we're going to get mana flooded and it'll be a beautiful day. Yeah. We got this double down, double down with the Akiri on here. You may unattach. I mean, so, so we've got the mall too. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually thinking this is our turn four play and just start going and refilling our hand. Yep. Cause you just turned three smash out while here, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. see who we're playing against. Straight up Avison Angel of Hope out of the command zone. Nice. White deck is like, I can get to eight mana. You just watch. Uh, White deck and could die on turn, turn two. We have turn the five, uh, deck that needs to be killed immediately. I got beat by this deck yesterday. Mm. It is very good. They just cascaded into their whole freaking oh, library. God. Oh, look, turn one Ragavan, y'all. <laughs> Don't worry, we modern up in here. No. Oh, I, I'm I'm so like, Ragavan's just all in the best creature ever printed. I thought it had haste. We're good, though. Yeah. Over here, we're playing Heretical Healer. Nice little, nice little casual deck. So we got. Yeah, that's cool. We got like a crazy over the top choice for a commander here. We got the salty or the the sweaty player in the middle here. Ooh, now we're sitting on Teferi's protection, which is nice. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. So we'll go ahead and play uh, a mountain, I guess. Yeah, we're just gonna get mountain That's out. We don't have a turn two play. So this is something we do on MTGO chat. Uh, I wouldn't normally tap out there, but you get a time bank. You can see everybody's time bank if you're not familiar with MTGO. Uh, mine is actually behind here. It's at 5842 right now. If you right click and click no possible play yield all, it will just kick you through decisions if you literally have nothing to do. Whereas normally MTGO would be like, hey, do you want to respond? Even if I don't have a response. Because mm -hmm. it's very like, this is how magic is played. All of the steps, all of the triggers. So early on, I don't really care that much. I'm tapping out to uh just make the game on my side go faster and i don't have to constantly be clicking <laughs> yeah bait master it's kind of funny i was playing my dahada upgraded deck and the opponent was playing joda and then there were two other decks i don't even remember what they were but i had a feeling they played some cards in a certain order on like turn six and i was like i have a feeling they're like gearing up right now for their oh cool this person just conceded oh all right well that's lame we got a three-person game we can we can live with a three-person game especially this early we just don't want it to become two out of nowhere yeah i think i think that guy played a planes and then played uh i don't know i'm getting attacked by ragavan okay what are they exile a one mana spell. <laughs> they exile Fable Passage. We're good. All right. Yeah, I think they they played Karu. I don't think they intended to play. Uh, yeah. Play their weird land. 
it enters the battlefield. Uh, well, well, it enters the battlefield tapped, and it, when it enters the battlefield, you sack it unless you return an untapped planes you control to yep. its owner's hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe they and they tapped the planes. Yeah, he had tapped the planes. Yeah, this. So he's just like, oh, <laughs> shame to concede. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, the Ragavan is an issue. I'm hoping that the Jota deck is really all in on their build and not too worried about about getting smacked for about removals 40, 44 commander damage. They can block with their Ragavan. All right, yeah. So I guess we go Cliff Chop into Hammer. I was gonna go Wyleth. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, into Wyleth. Hammer. We don't have Hammer right now. I meant Maul. Oh, I, I play you. Maul next Maul next turn. Yeah, yeah. Maul's after Maul is after Wyleth. We're just gonna get in there. What is it, Vigi? No, flying in first turn. No. Yep. But I mean, we get that 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 Maul on him and he's a four four flying first strike trample draw card on the attack trigger. Here comes Ragavan and Karizev and Ragavan all at me. Actually, it's Spirit Mantle too now. Oh, they're not swinging at me with any of this. Nope. The other, oh, yep. Yeah. Karizev and Ragavan are coming at me. This Ragavan's going over there. Um, I'm not going to block. <laughs> Isn't Ragavan a 1 1? A uh, 2 1. We need Vigi. Oh. Vigi on this boy. Oh, you just need a uh, an equipment on Wyleth. Start drawing some cards. Yep. I do like decks like this. I'm an aggro player in my soul. Yeah. That is how we roll. No, it's that not doesn't even take really... a legend rule because it's a different name. This is just yeah. named Ragavan. Create Ragavan, a legendary token, and this is Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. It's not really an aggro deck, really. It's more of like a... More of almost like almost almost like a stacks deck, but only uh, so that people can attack you. Right. And then you're just chipping with Wyleth to draw a ton of freaking cards. See, and then this is where uh, Spirit, uh, Mantle of the Agents <laughs> would come into uh, to play. Right. Like right. you sand, you sandbag that card for after the board wipe. Fire ants. Yeah, you got to sand. No. <laughs> All right, so do we put out Spirit Mantle, maybe? I'm kind of thinking Maul just because it flies, but... Well, it gives it plus two, plus two. Yeah, let's Maul. go with Maul. Well, I like Mantle and because... Then... now nah, we're one mana. I think we play Mantle oh. next turn because we would be open for Tuffries after that. Yeah, so next time... I would save the uh, the land drop until after the attack trigger, so you can see if you drew a, a better oh, like, a, like a tap a, land. That's a good note. Yep, that's a good note. There aren't that many tap lands in the deck, but just in case you draw like a, we could have drew something that was two colors. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. And then so you this get is gonna to... auto equip and. I'll just swing yep. it. I mean, swing it at Ragavan. This probably baits. This probably baits out the Nevenurals at this point, right? No, I don't think so. You think they'll wait We're to not. try and catch more? It's just, yeah, it's just a four-four. Man, I'd love to get to a point where, like, we're playing mm -hmm. everything but three mana, and we're ready to Tefries at any point. Mm -hmm. I love drawing cards. Favorite thing to do in MTG is draw cards. Togo. Yeah, so I think, I don't think we get the, uh, so we're not going to play anything. No. So I think, 
I don't think he never rolls discs yet, because he's got a his this he's got a rock out. We'll see. It'll be fun if he does we because we can do... rebuild pretty hard with Togo real fast. Yeah, but all we need to do is if we can just get around his the that discs next turn so that we can keep three mana up for to, right. to Fairy's protection. Exactly right. Start drawing cards. So chat, we also got some other tricks here besides just no possible play yield all because right now I do think it's viable to keep up this in case we have Path to Exile or Source of Plowshares. We're trying to mm -hmm. tell the opponent to, you know, play under what they would play. So we've got right click uh, yield until next end step. So we can do the same thing as no possible play yield all except we will go and we will get to do something at the end step if we wanted to. And we also get yield through this turn, which is <clears throat> just straight up leaving this up and we're able to yield through the turn because we know we don't have anything. And so if we can get them to play suboptimally just by having cliff top retreat untapped, great. Mostly, we don't really care. We're just trying to survive that Nevin Euro's disc back around where turn. And we're not really too scared about taking a ton of damage on a crackback right now because even though this is annoying to deal with, you know, it's just kind of poking damage. It's not, it's not bad. Yeah. I got to tell you, I would cut fire ants. No, dude, you have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Plus the other, th the other reason why fire ants is good is if you're going up against a token deck where there's a ton of one ones, you can just tap fire ants and just kill all. Of well, them. honestly, uh, on turn six, we'll be able to fire ants and keep Tefri's open if we still need it. So, well, if if Nevenerol's disc doesn't come out last turn, then basically, uh, uh, the the choice of our next turn hinges on whether this disc gets used right now. Yeah, yeah, which I don't think it does. They're gonna, but what are they gonna do? Just skip another turn? Yeah, just they're gonna just leave it up. It's gone. Ugh. They gone. Idiot. Eating all those treasure tokens. Kari Zev. I don't love he, the Nevin Euro's disc here. No. And plus he's going to kill his own mana rock. Like, what are you doing? So do we go Togo and start building back up? Or do we go F Fakiri and get ready to equip her? Um... Yes, we're going to return it to the command think zone. Or we could just Togo. recast Wyleth for five, say fuck it, and just, yeah. okay, we're rebuilding. Yeah, I guess just throw Wyleth back up. Garna's gonna return Karzev and Ragavan. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. Baitmaster, I don't think treasures are underrated at all. I think they are exactly rated. I think everyone knows the strength of treasures at this point. Yeah, see, like, I don't understand why he disked, like, so early in the game. It's just a waste. Each opponent sacks a creature. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Well, they already got the... I'm glad this is happening now, based on our yeah. game plan. But, I mean, Garna already got the the return from the yeah. battlefield. All right. Turn five. Let's see what we got. What do we draw? I'm really thinking we just slam Wyleth again and say go. What do you draw? Spectator seating. See. So let's play it. I think we go spectator. I think we say... <laughs> Throw Wyleth out. Yeah, we keep the card advantage going because we've still got a. I mean, we're a Boros deck and we have the most cards at the at the table because we've just kind of played very efficiently so far, one thing at a time. Yeah. And that board wipe this... was pretty conclu conclusive to get everything yeah. out. <laughs> That's the other thing when you're playing Voltron is um, when you have that that save spell like it's a fairy's protection right is just playing it out slowly and not trying to put out two equipments or two auras or one of each on a turn just oh yeah keeping that well, in keeping general that, that's that's that 
playing good commander when you have heroic intervention in your hand leave the two yep. mana open play mm -hmm. play you playing optimally is maybe not you playing the five mana thing it's playing the three yep. mana thing so you have heroic intervention up 100 percent. lots of people run into that what's our removal like we got some good removal um i've got uh a board wipe uh i can't think of its wrath of whatever it's um no, it's not a wrath. Um, oh yeah, winds of wrath. You're right. Winds of wrath. Yeah. So it takes out any creature that is in uh, enchanted. Interesting. They played Selvala. They tapped to play Joda, and they were like, "Yeah, I can do it." But then they just tapped and played Selvala. So if they mm. got a three-three for two here, and draw a card. No, that's not going to trigger Selvala. Power is greater than any creature's power. I mean, I kind of want to play Akiri next turn and be like, we draw a card off Sylvala, baby. I guess it depends yeah. on what Envoy here plays. I mean, uh, people like drawing cards. But we also, I mean, Spirit Mantle, Unquestioned Authority. Both of these are great options right now. I... So I don't like unquestioned authority just because then we're going to have to discard. Oh, I see. So I'll go with maybe spirit mantle first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're also on going to be on six, so we could Togo play rogues passage. Mm hmm. Not worry about drawing a card this turn. Just stay open with Teferis. Yeah. I don't hate that. If um full power Miriam deck dimly if I've if, seen full power Miriam decks kick ass. There's the sacrifice effect and they get to draw a card. That's a that's a nice mm. play. That is a nice play. Okay. Well, that's not gonna be fun playing against this deck. <laughs> yeah, sacrifice. It's just a bunch so, of removal, removal that I, deck over here. So that's the the case for getting on, you know, um, authority out on Wyleth as soon as possible. Well, you still got to sacrifice him then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but getting that to Fairy's protection. I kind of want to play this. We're gonna yeah. be we're gonna be unopened. We won't have Teferi's up, but it won't matter. We're gonna draw a card off of this because of Silvala. Yeah, and, and then we'll should be able to go get uh, our equipment. Right. It's a threat. Yes, we would like to draw a card. We draw Golem Skin Gauntlets and we can play it immediately. Nice. That's a good news. Can't equip it though, right? Nope. That's a two mana. Two mana equip on this thing. I hate that it put it down here on my board. We still got that over there, chat. Um, I guess I go. Yeah. We're trying to get our board to that point where we can just have that big turn. <laughs> what? A why do I feel like Lily's going to play a uh, flesh bag Marauder or some shit on the next turn? Oh, dude. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll run out of cards eventually. It sucks that yeah. that De Demon's Disciple was so synergistic with Sylvala because I wanted to play a three power creature first, but mm -hmm. we'll see. I mean, chances are this Jota deck pops off and still wins this thing. Yeah, Dimly, for sure. I mean, CDH and, and EDH, it's two different things. I know they have the fact that they're commander in common, but uh, mostly we talk non-CDH around here. We're not opposed to it. I do play it. But when we're talking about a card is good or bad, we're, mo we're talking about casual commander from jank to strong. And usually if I'm playing CD, C E D H, I need to be playing jank like Angie Falcon Wrath or something. Right. All right. There's Jota. They don't have mana open to protect it right now. Besides one green, I guess snakeskin. Oh, is she? 
Oh, wow. Never mind. We might be about to lose right here. <laughs> if they've got some untapped shenanigans here, chat, and they can untap Sovala multiple times, they're going to be cascading with Jota whenever they play a legend. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You can cast without paying its mana cost. Okay, so say. with four mana still left because Silvala lets you tap for seven with Joda out. <laughs> That's why they played the Silvala first. Okay. That's a it's little a bit of a miss, first. but mana is mana is gonna Mars. let them go crazy. Well, it can't it doesn't have metal craft. Uh no, yeah, you're right. You're right. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, they use three mana to cycle. All right, they're not going off this turn, but we are in trouble. Yeah, they can. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll get a Ragavan, though. Yeah, they're going to what? Go find another zero-cost legendary? No, he doesn't have haste. Oh yeah, zero cost legendary uh, Mox From Amber. the Cascade, yeah, I guess they already... I guess Mox Opal was the only one. Hmm. All right, we really need to draw... We need to get Fire Ants on the battlefield. Because <laughs> we need to yeah. draw Basilisk Color. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the top six. You can put an aura equipment from among them onto the battlefield. Oh, straight onto the battlefield. Yeah. And it attaches automatically. Nice. Yeah, so, I mean, too bad Fire Ants will have uh, summoning sickness, but... <laughs> right, it is what it is. We can yeah. also, if they just swing out at us, set freeze protection. Just don't yeah, swing true. at us. Don't swing yep. at us. All right, that was their turn, was Burnished Heart and Decanter of Endless Water. Oh, City Brass. Cool. Yeah, the uh, the reprint on that definitely got it back to being a budget card. Oh yeah, certainly did. So we can go ahead and play City of Brass. Like, yep, we're gonna do that. Um, and then they don't have uh, any flying, so we can just go punch them. Yeah, we'll go roll the dice on uh, Sky Hunter and hope we get something cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Baitmaster, I completely agree. We want to kill the Jota jo player first. Yeah. Okay. I I guess we take Black Blade Reforged out of the battlefield. That's pretty good. Here's ten to the face, and we can just <laughs> disappear from existence. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> All right, so we go fire uh, ants. Yeah, get fire ants out there. Because if we do draw, or you if we can three, armored four, into five. basilisk, we could win. Togo is uh, three CMC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not gonna work. Yeah, all right. That would have been dope to get Togo and fire ants. We can also play Togo on a turn where we. Oh, we should have attached gonna be golem like... skin gauntlets. These guys are, oh yeah, we could have attached the golem skin gauntlets Whoops. before we're attacking. Um, Might as well now. These guys are going to be like, what the oh, fuck no, is it's fire ants? It's equipped too. It's equipped too. We want three All right. Them. Yep. All right. We can pass. So this is now chat where we don't have any yields on. Ants. We want to time this Sephiroth's protection perfectly. What I'd love I to happen is if they I could just swing out at us. I guarantee neither one of these guys has ever seen fire ants. No one ever has, Bobby. Life. I'm pretty sure you <laughs> invented this card and put it in the MTG game. Oh. Uh, Rip and ship, what's up? Good to see you. Bobby does have a face. <laughs> I'm not watching uh chat. I'm trying to keep the screen as large as possible, but how's it going, Lance? 
Yeah, so I the the face cam is cool. Like my overhead cam, I can just kind of swing down and flip it around. So yeah, well, this will be a uh, uh, you know series that we do more going forward because I mean, you know obviously we haven't done it for any of the decks this year, so we can be like this deck one march welcome mm-hmm. tell us about the deck and i think it'll raise awareness of the league too because i think more people would play if they knew about it and it's mm-hmm. kind of on me for not advertising it better <laughs> y'all if after giving fire ants so much shit we can get a basilisk collar off of this oh, armor uh, with the teflons <laughs> up like they're yeah. going for a win here most likely because this person's down to a burnished heart. Yeah. I'm, a, yeah, I'm a on a two prote- one. Teferi's protection is gonna be so dope. And if we can get the collar off of the, the sky <laughs> and attach it to the fire ants and then tap it to wipe his board, like it's gonna be so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, here comes a hasty flasher. I mean it's like it's like, getting crazy over there. This is what the Jota deck does, chat. Yeah. When you see the Jota deck, kill the Jota deck. You got to kill Jota. I'm pretty sure you just banned Jota in our league, right? Uh, For, for Morphon. There we yeah. go. You see this? One white, this tap is... it, untap, target, untap another creature. And so now mm. they can add 12 mana, 13 mana in any combination of colors. And then use Sisse to get whatever they want. Nico, that's exactly right. I am going to get to do the Thanos line. Honestly, they're going to counterspell the Teferis and our whole plan is just... I don't think they will. I don't think they will. I think this is going to be like the most meme shit ever. (laughs) Especially if we can Basilisk Color on the Fire Ants. Oh my god, if we can Basilisk Color on the Fire Ants. It's going to be so (laughs) awesome. (laughs) I'll be like, do you put that in there specifically to work with Armored (laughs) Skyhunter? No. Dude, hey, it's working though. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're basically going to go infinite here and then we're going to be like, see ya, and flip them off and (laughs) jump backwards into a portal. (laughs) It's going to be so awesome. I can't wait. This guy's gonna be so salty. Jake, what's if up? If he counters, I mean, if he counters it, he counters it, right? You got it, you got it. But like, oh boy, Jake, the Jota deck is popping off like crazy, and we've got a Teferi's protection and possibly a way to kill this person next turn. So <laughs> we're hoping that we can disappear backwards into a portal, and we're like, nice attacks, bro. <laughs> oh man! Everybody, wave at Jake. Jake's here. Jake, this is what Bobby looks like. <laughs> Jake knows what I look like. I know, I know. Right. We need uh, one time for the one time. We got to hit this Basilisk collar. Oh my god, dude! Just we got eighty-one cards in the deck. Somebody do me some numbers. Looking at the, top, look at the six. top six. Yeah, we need, and we're gonna get to draw a card, so we'll go down to eighty. So we get to look at the top seven cards basically, and we need oh, a Basilisk collar. Thing- the other thing too is we need to um so if we don't get the before we go looking for the basilisk colors we need to put the stone um the gauntlets golem, golem skin gauntlets right so we can draw two no we're not drawing That's cards a, well, oh we don't have uh Wyleth, okay we can drop a kiri just to draw a card off the armored sky hunter attack but okay yeah so instead of equipping it correctly oh here's the big attack are they out of juice? Yep. Yeah, their hand is empty. Bro, if we can hit this thing, we... Oh my god, they're so toast. It's going to be beautiful. There's an additional combat phase. You know who doesn't care? Teferi's protection guy. Don't care. All right, so... I think we go Akiri so that when we do attack, we can draw a card. We're just case... going to wait until blocks... We... Yeah, so we definitely want to try to hit this out as many times as possible oh they're declaring blockers okay so we're not declaring any blocks did i just do this wrong no here we go okay here we go 
Their hand is empty. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Vorkle Treeborn. <laughs> See you later. Oh, God. That's Bye. so awesome. See. All right. Oh, God. All right. Come on, magic gods. Not like I told you. Not like I told you. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. Not like I told you. So basically, right. we also like fucked this person because they are they <laughs> have an additional so combat phase to deal with. <laughs> that guy's dead. He's dead. Okay. the The hurt thing here is that they do have flyers. Yeah, this person conceded. Yep. The thing is, is they do have one, one, two flyers uh, that are kind of brutal. Well, let's see. My what thing came draw? unequipped. That's so annoying because Why? of Tefri's protection. Or is it just like uh, a glitch? No, right no, no. It, yeah, I think it's just glitch. I think it should go back on it. When it phases out, any um, thing on it would phase out on it. It doesn't leave uh, leave any zones. Oh, Jesus, they can still search up with Cissé. Oh, well. Oh, man. I would also take top decking Winds of Wrath right here. Uh, one, two, three, oh, four, God. five, six, seven. I think it's seven total, right? Or is it nine? Winds of Wrath? Winds of Wrath. Oh, it's five. Five, oh, shit. yeah. We're, I thought it was like yeah. a huge one. No. Oh. Winds of Wrath would be huge right here. Okay, that's not what we wanted. All right, so... Let's do a Kiri. Well, what about on question authority? Just draw a card straight up and Armored's going to be able to get through. Okay. And maybe we... One, yeah, two, three... Uh, if we draw Winds of Wrath, we're not going to have the mana to play it. I think the damn Jota deck got us. This is so well, broken. Spirit Mantle will only allow us to... It gives it protection from creatures, right? Yeah, it'll get through. It allows it to get through, but I I don't think Winds of Wrath is our is our out right now, so I think we play a Curie. What's our out? Well, that's the thing. We'd have to play the Basilisk Collar and then equip it. Well, no. So, if, if we get it off the Armored Sky Hunter trigger, it'll come saying, down, draw, go draw on. So, I don't think we need to... I, I think what we, we should do is attack first, so we can get more knowledge. Because if we put uh, a Kiri out or like beforehand... Well, the thing it, is, it is we probably we lose play anyway, play because... We can, play unquenched, we can play the uh, unquenchable on it to draw the card afterward for the same mana value so i think we just attack first attack right now before we're playing anything yeah i think so i think we we try to go in with as much information as possible okay so we'll go ahead we we're go probably ahead we gonna lose next turn and anyway so spin it. yeah don't attack with fire ants no i'm not attacking <laughs> with fire ants <laughs> I wish Fire Ants was Blasphemous Act right now. Yeah. Be dope. <laughs> All right. One All time. Right, let's see. Come on, Magic Gods. Damn. Oh. We weren't going to draw anything we needed anyway. Guess we equip Sword of the Animist on it and go get a land. Because we haven't played a land yet. Well, it comes on the battlefield tapped. That doesn't matter. Wait, doesn't it just equip to it? Yeah, Sword of the Animus I don't think is going to trigger because it's already attacked. Oh, uh, shit. Nanbo with Armored Sky Hunter there. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it was a whiff. We knew it was close yeah. there anyway. I mean, they obviously uh, put a lot of legendaries onto the battlefield there. 
Um, should we activate fire ants? <laughs> I would. I think we should go ahead and play the spirit mint. Uh, the unquench uh, the the authority to draw oh, a card. Armored's gonna die here. It's gonna bump into a fourteen fourteen or a thirteen fourteen. I think yeah. we we just kind of we'll, lose. We'll play the authority on the fire ants just to see. Okay, yeah, let's let this attack step play out. Just see. Oh, another adding seventeen mana. <laughs> what are they gonna? They're going to play Teferi's Protection. They're going to go get a legendary thing to block it. I mean, at this point, they've... Oh. It's just such a... Ugh. We're just trying to play our outs here. This deck is so... On rails. <laughs> Don't like the Jota decks. Gotta be honest. I mean... We... We had an out that we were playing to. So. For sure. No, we did everything we could. Their deck is just insane. This is turn eight. Yeah. <laughs> Look at their board. And they've got infinite mana to search up. I mean, you got Samet still on the battlefield. It's like, dude, just just take the damage and then kill us. What yeah, do, why I mean, do like you need kinda, to like... Are we... I just said, GG, why are you doing more? <laughs> Haste, trample. Okay. Well, it's a good thing it's not his turn, so he can't attack us. <laughs> um... Okay. Let us play our one card just to see if we uh, can play. We're just play. trying to draw Basilisk well, Collar, baby. Yeah, or Wrath of God. Oh, you run Wrath in here? I think there's Wrath of God in here. I don't think I saw that when we were tucking it. I think I got one. Let's go Fire Ants. Your authority is unquestioned, Fire Ants. Mm -hmm. We believe in you. Draw right. Basilisk Color. Generous gift. Ah, uh, all right. Good game. <laughs> it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. <laughs> Gotta play to your outs, right? Absolutely, you do. I mean, if we could... Here, draw a card. Draw a card. Draw a card. No, nah, we were... Oh, man. Ugh. A source of your choice. That would have only hurt... That would have only helped us with one creature, right? So, yeah. Check the deck list on this. Um... Chat! We had Dawn Dusk. That would have definitely helped. Every yeah. single creature in their deck was like a 15 15. Chat, thanks everybody for hanging out. Big hand for Bobby coming in, co hosting the stream tonight with me. Bobby, thank you for joining me. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me, bro. It's nice. It was fun. William is Bister, John Reed. Thank y'all for the super chats. Everybody hanging out. Click that like button. Click that subscribe button. If you haven't already, I'm going to call it a night. This was definitely a fun, a fun episode. And this is a series we will bring back. We are definitely going to do some, we'll get Jake in here. We'll talk through some decks. I'll have to set up a screen. That's got all three of our faces. It'll be a blast. Yeah, it was fun. Especially like talking about like the secret tech that we that's in our meta and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to chop some of these deck techs out, some of these deck discussions out and see if anybody wants to watch them after the fact. Mm -hmm. As a little video. Cool. But everybody else, bye bye. Love you all. Have a happy Friday. Have a happy weekend. We'll be back bye. next Wednesday live and in person. Ready to greet you.